Welcome to the Rusted Garden. Today I want to talk about phosphorus. It's a major macronutrient and on most fertilizers you see uh, N, P, and K and they come up as numbers like 24, 8, 16. That's nitrogen. This one's phosphorus. This one over here is potassium. So we're going to talk about the P or phosphorus. There are really six major macronutrients. These are elements, fertilizers, that your plants really need to thrive. The main ones, again, are N, P, and K, and they are really the primary ones. That's what you always, always see. You see nitrogen, uh, phosphorus, and potassium on your fertilizer products. But also calcium, magnesium, and sulfur are macronutrients. I'm going to talk about them in other videos. So for phosphorus, why is phosphorus important? Phosphorus overall, generally speaking, is about the growth and maturity of your plant. Phosphorus helps with storing and transferring energy in a plant. It promotes strong root growth. It helps with flower and fruit production. You get more flowers, you get more fruit. It helps with plant and fruit maturity, which means the speed of growth. You want your plants, if they're supposed to mature in 60 days, you want them to mature in 60 days. If your tomatoes are supposed to get you know, to a certain size, or your peppers are supposed to get to a certain size, you want your fruit to get to full size, full maturity. Helps with uh, cell division and tissue growth. Um, has to do with the sugars and starches, but everything that your plant really needs to grow and mature um, involves phosphorus. That's why it's a macronutrient. Phosphorus fertilizer, how is it made? And you may have noticed in my videos, I'm not 100% chemical fertilizer, I'm not 100% organic um, gardener where I just use organic products. I use both and I use them in a sensible way and that's what I hope these videos show you is they show you how to use the products, it helps you understand the products and it helps you make a decision on what you want to use. So phosphate fertilizer, how is it made? Rock phosphate is the raw material. It's basically the element phosphorus on the periodic table. It has other things in there but it has the phosphorus. The phosphorus in rock phosphate is not quickly or readily available to your plants. It's a low availability of phosphorus for plants, which, which means is that rock phosphate will take a long time to break down and become available to your plant. So what we do is we take phosphate, we take the raw material, and we convert it into something your plant can use quickly. Rock phosphate in a process, it's either a wet process or a dry process, is mixed with phosphoric acid. That generally creates, it's a technical process, but that generally creates orthophosphoric acid. That's the form of phosphorus that is readily available to your plant. So the chemical process takes a raw ingredient, rock phosphate, puts it through a man-made process, human-made process, and it creates orthophosphoric acid. That is going to be readily available to your plant. There's also something called polyphosphate, which is just sh several chains of, of orthophosphoric uh, acid bound together. When that product hits the ground, the polyphosphate then breaks down into orthophosphoric acid. But that's the chemical process. So you're taking the raw form of phosphorus, putting it through a process, now you have something your plant can use quickly. And the key for phosphorus and fertilizers in general is, are they available to your plants right away, like that day and that week? Or are they available to your plants down the line? So when you look on, um, pro, uh, on fertilizers that have phosphorus, you're always going to see the term available phosphate. And that tells you the percentage of phosphorus in the product that will be available for your plant. For instance, you know, this could be, well, that's a chemical process. But let's just say you have an uh, organic form of phosphorus. There might be some phosphorus your plant can't use right away, but then there's phosphorus your plant can use more quickly. I know it gets a little bit confusing, but you want to understand that it's available phosphate or even available nitrogen, available um, potassium. What is going to be available to your plant? And these numbers tell you. So it's they make it kind of easy. So 9% of this product by weight, 45% of this product by weight is going to be available for your plant or your plants. Organic phosphate. This is an organic product. It's bone meal. It has 9% by weight of 
phosphorus that's going to be available. The second thing that you need to know is when is it going to be available. This is available really that week. This is available three to six months down the line and that's important. So if you're using manure compost they ha it has phosphate in it but that's going to be available to your plants three to six months down the line. If you're using rock phosphate or bone meal you also have to keep in mind what the pH level of your garden soil is. You want a pH level that's between 6 and 7 in general. As you get a pH level of 8 or higher or you're pushing from 7 up towards 10, I don't want to panic you like if you have a soil of 7.1, don't freak out. But as you get a higher alkaline level, as your, as your pH level goes from 7 towards 10, rock phosphate and bone meal will never be available to your plant. A chemical process happens where the phosphorus gets locked into other molecules, other chemicals in your soil. So pH is really important. If you have a pH that's below 7, between 6 and 7, rock phosphate generally can take a year to be ready and available to your plant. Bone meal can take several months. And that's important so that if your plants are struggling, say, with a phos uh phosphorus deficiency or you think you're putting on something that's going to give your plants phosphorus that week and you use rock, fo rock phosphate and bone meal you're not doing that you're putting it in there but it's not going to be ready towards you know for several months or you know the following year so again you need to know when you use these products when is the fertilizer when is the phosphorus going to be ready for your plants to use Hopefully that makes sense to you. And the bottom line is phosphate, bone meal, rock phosphate, bone meal, it needs, the phosphorus in those products needs the acidity to work with the product, break it down, and make it available to the plants. And if you think about it, what they did when they processed the rock phosphate in this, they added phosphoric acid to it and basically did this process. So it puts this into a form that's going to be available to your plant. I know it can be confusing, but I just wanted to give you some of the background so that you understand what's going on. Phosphorus deficiencies. What happens if your plant doesn't have enough, enough phosphorus? Basically, you're going to have a stunted plant. It's not going to be growing like it should. And you might notice plants just sit at a certain size. You can get leaves that are overly dark in color. When the plants are, are young, and this, I usually notice, notice this in tomatoes, you put your tomatoes out young, it's a little bit cold, they don't like the cold, so they're not growing as well. If you don't have phosphorus in the soil, the root systems aren't developing because it's cold, now they're also not developing as quickly because it doesn't have enough phosphorus, and you can see the bottom leaves of your tomatoes or your plants start to turn yellow and work their way up. And it's important to understand that the oldest leaves are affected first. Why is that important? Because if you have a plant that's to a certain size and you see a problem starting on the bottom of the leaves and working its way up, it can be a signal to you that this could be more um, nutrient related than necessarily a disease. And some diseases do start at the bottom and work their way up. But it gives you a clue of what you might have to do for your garden. Also, your plants, and this happens a lot in tomatoes too, can get purple stems or purple veins in the leaves. Recommendations. I recommend um, a couple of things. In this case, uh, if your garden is struggling, get a pH test because you want to make sure your pH is between 6 and 7. A pH that is too low towards 0 or too high towards 10 and out of this range is going to affect the way all the nutrients, nitrogen, potassium, um, phosphorus, calcium, sulfur, magnesium, it's going to affect the way all these nutrients are absorbed by your plant. So if you're ever in doubt, your garden's struggling, a pH test will really help. If your soil again is too acidic, your phosphorus is going to be absorbed by uh, iron and aluminum oxides, which basically means it takes the phosphorus from the plant and locks it into a different form. If it's too alkaline, it means your phosphorus is going to be absorbed by calcium carbonate, and again, that'll be taken away from your plant. I think that actually forms maybe calcium phosphate. Second thing is if you're using synthetic products like straight bone meal, if you buy like an organic fertilizer that's like a 
you know, two, six, seven. It's going to have different forms of um, phosphorus in there. Some of them may be available right away. Some of them may need to break down. You have to read the package and understand that. But when you're using bone meal as the primary form of phosphorus, this can take uh, several months to start breaking down and really be available for your plant. I use this um, a lot of times in the fall when I planted my garlic and did a video on that. I put in um, bone meal so that this will be breaking down as the bulb is dormant through the winter and when the bulb is up and growing um, the leaves and, and forming a strong garlic uh, bulb for the spring and early summer this will have broken down and it's available to the plant so that's a strategy I use. So I might use this product knowing that it, it's not going to be available three to six months down the line. If I was going to use rock dust, I would use that knowing that I'm building my garden um, for the future. So the first application of um, rock dust may not be available for you know six months to a year. So I'm also going to use, you know, possibly if I need it, because you may not need to use a straight phosphorus fertilizer triple phosphate where it's you know 45 percent by weight for adding phosphorus to your garden you may just not need it and you can get away with other fertilizers i'll talk about that but i would use a synthetic form of phosphorus if i want to get it to my plants that week really really get you know the spring bed set up have phosphorus in there that's going to be readily available i use the chemical fertilizer so again, I'm not necessarily for organic, I'm not necessarily for chemical, I'm for understanding when to use these products. And that's what I just talked about, number four, is available phosphate is what plants use immediately. So you need to know when these are going to be available to your plant. If you're in doubt, just use a 10-10 fertilizer. Those are often uh, synthetic, chemically made. They will get all the major macronutrients, nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium to your plant. You could use something like this. This is all organic. It has a 2-5-3 ratio. The phosphorus in there, the nitrogen in there, the potassium in there is going to be more quickly available for your plants, unlike bone meal, which will take longer. So you have to understand what you're putting in your garden and how your plants are going to use it or when your plants are going to be able to use it. But if you're ever in doubt, just go with the 10 10 10 fertilizer. It will save you a lot of headaches. Um, oh, and one more thing. What you might notice is this chemically processed uh, form of phosphate, triple phosphate, is just phosphorus. There's no nitrogen, there's no potassium. Make sure you read it. It's a half a teaspoon per foot, feeds quickly, gets phosphorus to it. Does nothing else for your plants but adds phosphorus. When you go to bone meal, bone meal also has nitrogen in it. It's also high in calcium, so it has calcium in there. I think it was 6% calcium. Although this may take several months to be readily available for your, for your plants, you're also feeding your soil. A lot of organic fertilizers have the extra benefit of feeding the microbes and the organisms in your soil, so you really build better soil life. And in this case, you have nitrogen, you also have calcium. Calcium really helps prevent blossom end rot in tomatoes and other vegetables. So there is a benefit with lots of um, organic fertilizers in that it also feeds your plant, but also uh, builds soil life. This does not build soil life. There's also potential, and I you know, want to let you know this too, is that if you overuse chemical fertilizers, it can add more salts to your soil, it can kill life in your soil. But it won't do that if you use them wisely. So don't be afraid that, oh my God, I can't use a chemical fertilizer. It's going to destroy the life of my soil. That won't happen if you use it wisely. And in fact, I would recommend not necessarily using this at full strength. I never recommend using miracle Grow at full strength. Always keep the numbers down. You never need 24% nitrogen for your vegetable garden. You're going to get too many leaves. Cut it in half. So I hope this gives you a good idea of how to use phosphorus in your garden. This winter I'm going to go over all the nutrients that your plants really need. I'm going to go over the macronutrients, the micronutrients, and talk about a lot of things that hopefully gives you the information you need to have a thriving garden next year. Most importantly, have fun in your garden. The goal of gardening is to enjoy the vegetables. Don't stress 
if you're using organic. Don't stress if you're using too much chemical uh, fertilizer. The only time I really recommend trying to go more organic is when you're spraying stuff onto your plants that kill insects or that you're going to ingest. That really makes sense to me to really try and go with something that's less chemically harmful. Hope you enjoyed the video. Please check out my blog at www.therusticgarden.blogspot.com and also check out my YouTube videos. Thanks.